friends uh, my previous two videos on malware analysis that is level 1 level 2 like if you have uh, uh, done it before like if you are looking for a senior analyst role uh, in the uh, cyber security domain then this video will be helpful for you otherwise if you are not for this you can check out the level 1 and level 2 uh, videos on malware analyst okay so if you have uh, made it through the previous levels you can expect the most difficult interview questions at this level as it is a highly paid position don't get me wrong these questions will not be impossible but you will have to dig deep to give satisfactory answers to these bad boys so get ready and don't let them see you sweat and get ready for the senior analyst level of questions what is reverse engineering of malware Reverse engineering of malware consists of taking an executable and performing what has been called the computer version of an MRI on it. Due to the unknown nature of the executable, this work should be performed on a system or environment that is not connected to the network to minimize potential damage. If you connect it to the network, then they like the damage will be more. Okay, so this process can be pain stacking, but it's sometimes the only way to understand the executable. What are two sources of information? to look to when reverse engineering malware to help you identify what you are reversing. Even the best malware analysts may not know exactly what they are looking at when they are reversing a new thread. Therefore, it pays to have some sources of information to look in situations like these. To that, to, to that end, uh, two good sources of information to reference are white papers and analysis reports. Both of these sources can uh, be widely found online and will be in uh, like invaluable to your ability to keep abreast of new changes to the malware battlefront. What is assembly language and why is it important? Assembly language is a last level of human readable code. Malware code is generally down at the operating system level and for a human to be able to read this code it needs to be disassembled to a level that is readable to the human eye. Malware analysts will generally disassemble up to the assembly language. From there they should uh, know how to read and write in assembly language to analyze the malware code. What is a rootkit? Again, one more important question. A rootkit is a clandestine computer program that allows for continued unauthorized privileged access to a computer all while hiding its presence from the computer user. Rootkits have the ability to change data reports in order to further hide their existence. While the rootkits are not in and of themselves bad, they are common tools for cyber criminals. An employee at your organization had his password stolen and is only uh, and it is only his first week on the job. You discover a program on his computer named keylog.exe. What should you do? Again a real world question. In a case like this where employee has not been on the job for a very long, it would be very strange for their credentials to already be compromised. The program keylog.exe is most likely a keylogger, a type of program which relays every keystroke performed on a computer to cyber criminals. This would enable someone to capture the user credentials, delete the program without a doubt. Let's say you need a sandbox where monitoring and control is done on the hyper user layer what would you use well there are different kinds of sandboxes this question is specifically asking for one where control is performed at the hyper wiser level for a, for a situation like this you should say to use vm ray vm ray is control in monitoring uh, like VM rays control and monitoring is performed at the hypervisor layer and this is done in lieu of hooking. Let's say you had to build a malware analysis lab from scratch. What would you need at the very least for a foundation to build upon? I would say that at 
uh, at the very least a malware analysis lab needs environments and analysis machine and network simulation as well as hypervisor i would say that i would start with a windows analysis uh, machine or running the windows 10 or windows 11 and some method for network simulation in which uh, case i would go with the inet sim network simulation running on ubuntu linux from here the sky is the limit after you probably set up and configure these environments there are many many good programs to choose from that would help you with the malware analysis so too many tool lists but at the very least this is what you need why is it good to have a hypervisor uh, in a malware analysis lab? In testing environments, without a hypervisor, you need to have multiple computers running different operating systems. Hypervisors allow you to run multiple operating systems from one computer, which takes up fewer organization resources. Another good thing is that hypervisor can run multiple row uh, tools at once, making a malware analysis job easier. Tell me about the most difficult malware case you ever had to work. This is a like most uh, frequently asked question in the in this domain. This one is the mother of all hypothetical questions. So much so that you also have to fill in the skeleton of the question as it completely comes from the past experience. Try to bring up a time when you had a reverse engineering a tricky piece of malware or when you encountered a new and unknown threat that you ended up relying upon your natural instinct and acquired knowledge to resolve the issue. If you were faced with a malware situation that you did not know how to handle, where or what would you consult to help you figure it out? This is where you can uh, show your uh, hand regarding your uh, go-to sources of malware analysis knowledge. I would say that my uh, go-to electronic uh, source of information is GitHub. Okay not for me for everyone it is github specifically this uh, curated list of sources resources uh, if i had to choose an actual physical book i would say the malware analysis cookbook uh, which is an excellent for source as a backup answer i would use your friends or colleagues in the malware analysis field so these are all the most uh, important questions uh, that you can come across uh, uh, in the level 3 interviews. Not only this, there are some more other questions for which, like, see, there is a nef uh, no definite answer for such kind of uh, real world questions because uh, if you are an exp experienced professional, uh, the things, whatever you have experienced in a job is again a question for you. So you need to know uh, that it is a common sense, uh, like uh, if you had experience uh, or if you have handled an uh, uh, like more sensitive case in malware analysis, you can like explain the case. Uh, that will be only sufficient for the interviewer to understand your uh, skills and knowledge. Okay, so better uh, like you should be very good at explaining the things okay bit by bit okay it's not like your communication skills will have to be like very uh, like uh, good uh, okay it's it's okay like if you could explain in your own language a specific case that you have handled okay so these are all the questions that you will come across thanks for watching take care bye bye